I'm gonna embark on a bike packing trip today that I've been planning for months. This is not just any bike packing trip either. This trip is a trip around the second largest national park in the country. It includes the longest piece of single track in the country, the Old Ghost Road, the longest great walk, the Heafy Track, a Heartland Ride, the Great Taste Trail, endless amounts of gravel, one of the most beautiful lakes I've ever seen, beaches, palm trees, and most importantly, this is the national park I've spent the last summer guiding in on these tracks. And I've never been able to bike them. I'm having a bit of a late start today, mostly because I have a dental appointment at uh, 10.15. Dental hygiene is extremely important and I'm taking care of that. And I made this appointment months ago and I honestly completely forgot about it. Overall, this trip should be amazing. At this stage, I have three main logistical issues that I need to deal with on this trip. The first one is getting actually to the Kaharangi 500 trail. It doesn't go straight to Nelson, so I took a little trail called the Great Taste Trail and I'm going to get up all the way to Tapawera on that. Once I pick up the Kaharangi 500 and Tapawera, I'm going to start heading east. The next logistical issue we have is that the river on the Hefe Track needs to be crossed. And uh, I've been checking the old weather here, and it looks like it's gonna rain. And whether you're experienced in river crossings or not, it's probably easy to deduce that when it's raining, uh, it makes that more challenging. I'm definitely gonna be riding into the dark today, but for right now, I have a bunch of pasties and a custard square, and uh, we're gonna get up on some gravel and we're gonna ride into the night. less than five kilometers from the Spooner Tunnel, which is a rad choo-choo train tunnel through the top of a mountain. It's 1.3 kilometers long, which is almost a full mile. I got Google mapped today because there was a small closure on the trail that I'm using and it took me up into some crazy forestry road in the middle of nowhere. Um, so I had an hour delay and I had to backtrack. But that's all right, the views are beautiful. The vibes are good. We're getting to camp at dark anyways. So what's a little bit later than, than dark? It's still dark. I'm officially on the Kaharangi 500. So all up, this is gonna be about 600 kilometers and uh, I'm gonna make my way to the spot where I'm gonna camp tonight. It's probably two to three hours of riding. That little delay I had where I rode really far up a forest service road really set me back and I'm gonna miss out on some views unfortunately this evening because the sun's going down, but that's all right. Um, we got two, three hours left. I'm gonna get a good night's rest. We're gonna get back after it in the morning. First day is in the books. Um, I think it was like 110, maybe 120 kilometers with my little navigation snafu. I'm at this little roadside campsite right now that's dock owned. As soon as I got here, it started raining. So that's perfect. Do you hear that lovely sound? That's rain. It's been doing that all night. The rain is not gonna stop for a few hours, it looks like. I'd say until noon or two, if the rain doesn't really let up, it's gonna make that river crossing impossible. And if it's impossible, I'm gonna have to turn around and ride the four days back home. So, I won't be able to do the heapy track at that stage. Um, and I'll be, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do, honestly, if that happens. 
And, you know, I guess we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, as they say. So I sat and warmed up, had some coffee, and now I'm making my way from Lake Rotoroa all the way to the Brayburn track. I'm gonna take that up and over and into Murchison. Found a sweet barn that has has a power source in it. There's electricity and a roof. Um, it's not really raining right now, but it rained a lot today. Um, I'm making better time than I expected. I'm in Murchison, the metropolis of Murchison. There's a bit of rain on the forecast for tonight and tomorrow, but it looks like it'll be a nice day. Looks like this is home for tonight. I'm stoked that it's here because the tent is wet for one. For two, the sand flies here are hellacious. So it keeps me away from those because it's a screened in porch. Three, I'm gonna try and get an early start tomorrow. I'm really excited for this trail. This is the old ghost road. I have guided on this trail all summer long. So this is, I've already done it multiple times. I've walked it multiple times. I've run it once. And this will be the first time I've biked it, but I've wanted to bike it forever. And the Old Ghost Road is extremely special. I think it's one of the coolest trails around. It's the longest piece of single track in the entire country. And it was built by a bunch of volunteers that gathered money because they found this particular piece of bush to be absolutely incredible. And I would tend to agree with them. I'm gonna do it in about a day, day and a half. Not really what I'd recommend for most people. If you did go out to try and do the old ghost road yourself, I would say you should stay at the high point, which is the ghost lake hut, and then take that to do all the downhill section on your second day, and stay at specimen point, which is the last hut, and then out. And I would also recommend staying in the old ghost road facilities and not a dock hut like I'm gonna stay in, because the facilities that old ghost road have provided include gas, pots, pans, cups. The way this particular trail is designed, you don't need to carry a lot of stuff, which is awesome. So for tonight, I'm just going to have a little bit of couscous and lentils, nothing crazy. Get to bed early and then try and get an early start, like right at first light, maybe because the largest climb of the entire trip is going to be first thing tomorrow morning. It is looking like it's not raining, which is awesome. It was supposed to. Got about 2,000 meters of climbing. Have lunch up top. You might be asking yourself, after spending an entire summer here, why would you come back and bike around it? I assumed with every guided trip, the trails would become more mundane but the opposite actually happened. Every pass through the trail, it started to feel more and more like home. At the first hut for the day, this one is Lyle Saddle Hut. Part of the reason I'm doing the Kaharangi 500 at all is so I can do a lap around my favorite national park in the entire country. And if you are in New Zealand, I strongly urge for you to come and check out the Kaharangi National Park in some capacity because it is just absolutely epic. The Old Ghost Road is by far the most technical section of the loop. With over 9,000 feet of climbing over roughly 50 miles, it makes it not only the longest piece of single track in the country, also one of the hardest from an endurance perspective. But even for the most accomplished outdoor enthusiasts in New Zealand, this trail alone is considered a bucket list trip.
This is Ghost Like Hut. And, uh, I don't know. It's just empty. And I just feel like right now, like really the, the summer is over. I spent a lot of nights up here with groups, guiding. And the time that I've spent in New Zealand has been awesome, unexpected. It's been so many different things. But I just never knew when it would end. And now that I do know, I think like right now, it's really starting to hit me that it's over. I'm really tired from climbing up that hill, but man, oh man, what a beautiful year and a half it's been. I've seen a lot, I've done a lot, walked across the country, biked across huge chunks of it, lived in Nelson, I was a guide. I did a lot of things that I thought were just amazing, not even possible. I don't know, I think it's all really, right now, It's. It's really starting to feel like the end of my time in New Zealand. And I don't really know. I don't know what to do with that anymore. I don't know. I was excited to go home. It's just one of those places that I never thought that I would come to. And I just never knew that I was going to love it so much. And I never knew that I was going to have to leave, so. I don't know. It's been awesome. This trail is awesome. Ooh, yeah, well, that got a little bit emotional for a second there. It all just came crashing down. I just realized suddenly that I have less than two weeks that remain in New Zealand. And honestly, I wouldn't change a thing. Cheers to New Zealand. It's a beautiful country, beautiful things to do, lovely people. I've really loved my time here. That's the best summary I can put there of that. And spending this time on my bike, revisiting some of the places I've already been, seeing some of the scenes I've already seen, but more importantly, going around and exploring one of the areas that meant the most to me of my entire time in New Zealand. It's been incredible. I'm so happy that I was able to do this, that I was able to make the time and even, I, but hear me out, even if it rains super hard for the rest of the trip, and I don't get across the key if you tried. At least I can say I tried. I just got that bad boy downhill ready. So my tripod fell off, so I went to look for it. A couple of K's back and forth and nothing, so that's a bummer. It is 3.30 now. I haven't made a lot of progress since Ghost Lake Hut, and I'm way behind schedule. But I had a mild emotional breakdown while I was up there, so maybe it was worth it. Thirty minutes from sunset, I have an hour of usable light left. Over 20 kilometers of riding. We'll see how much I film in the next section. I'm saying very little. That's my estimation. Because I'm smoked and my tripod's broken.
Last little bit of light. We've made it up and over the boneyard. A lot of the major climbing, there's still a little more climbing. Let's just be fair. This is a hilly trail, okay? Stop kidding yourself, Garrett. There's hills, you're gonna climb with your bike. Home sweet hut, we made it. It's a little after 7 p.m. right now. Pretty hit. It was a big day. That's a lot of climbing. It was definitely over 8,000 feet of climbing today. Underestimated the old ghost, my mistake. But 7 p.m., that's not terrible. We got about 18 to 20 kilometers left on the old ghost road and then we're gonna ride over to Karamea. Fingers crossed that the uh, four square is open. So it's gonna be a good day. Whew, what a day. Getting off the old ghost road was sweet. There was a large quantity of moisture falling from the sky and hitting me in the face and eyes. Most places they call that rain, but here on the west coast of New Zealand, we call that cloudy. It was very, very cloudy today for a while. I rode about 85 kilometers I'm in Karamea now. Karamea is the end of the road, and it is where I get onto the Hefe track tomorrow. It rained a lot. I'm very concerned about that river crossing. I also filmed very little today because I put the camera away and just kept it there. And I had a headwind for a while, and then it turned lovely into a tailwind. I've got deli two delicious packs of kimchi ramen I'm gonna smash at this holiday park tonight. Very affordable comes with a shower, a kitchen, a lounge, electricity, and it's $13. Sign me up. That's a deal and a half right there. I'm here for tonight. I'm going to wake up as early as possible tomorrow, get packed up, and ride out to the Hefe, and hopefully I can get across that river. I'm on the Heafy track officially. It's a bit damp. I'm really looking forward to riding on the coast and uh, it should be kind of punchy and uphill for the next like day and a half. So then we'll have a cruisy downhill to Golden Bay. With the level of rainfall in the last 24 hours, the thought of crossing the river seems hopeless. But I'm taking comfort in the fact that in a few short miles, I'll have an answer to the biggest question mark in the entire trip. Right now, I'm just going to have some lunch. And I met another cyclist while I was on the Old Gills Road. We got in contact last night, and he's going to meet me at this hut. And we're going to cross the river together. That way, it's just a bit more safe. You know, we have eyes on each other, and we can just see how the conditions are. Um, he's a young man from Germany who's been cycling in the South Island. So it's cool to get connected with him and uh, have a little bit of a buddy system. So for now, I'm gonna have lunch in this immaculate hut, relax until he shows up, um, and then we're gonna get after it. That's the end of the line right there. That is where the track ends and the bridge used to be. I just had a little gander at the water. It's looking pretty high. Optimism has dropped a little bit. I'm gonna go now and try. It looks pretty deep, to be honest. Here goes nothing.
Oh. I don't want to go back. It is crossable, baby. Woo! Just barely. Damn, feeling lucky. I bought most streets. Us two in these trees. Diamonds on my feet. Caught up in these talks. Circling my head top. Should have been more cautious. Now I got what I wanted. Oh my god. Well, that problem is solved. We made it over the river. It went better than expected. I have about 10 kilometers of uphill climbing to get to the hut for tonight. All non-technical, pretty cruisy, so it shouldn't be a big deal. Oh! Wow, I say that as I slip on a log. For old time's sake, I'm gonna sleep under the table tonight. As a guide, you are usually the last person to go to sleep and the first person to wake up. And in the bunk rooms here in the huts in New Zealand, it's just a bit awkward to come in late and leave early. But the weird part is there's motion sensor lights in the hut. So in order to stop from turning the light on in your sleep, you have to sleep under the dining room table like this. I've had numerous people in the hut look at me like I'm a crazy person when they get up in the middle of the night to pee. They're also quite startled when they turn on the lights and see just a pair of lights sticking off from under the table, but it's pretty effective and honestly I got really used to it. To have your own space in the hut is pretty rare, so. Life has momentum. You cannot stop it. Things, places, people, they change. With any luck, maybe they'll change you too. Are you serious right now? This is a super rare bird. Holy crap. I've been trying to see one of these all summer. This is amazing. Oh my god. I have been trying all summer to see these birds. They're super rare. You can find them rarely anywhere in the world. There's like four of them right here. I've done this 17 times, and this is the first time I've been able to see one. I don't even really care about birds that much, but man, I want to see a Takahe so badly. It's insane. They're, they just walk right by me. It's absolutely freezing this morning. There's frost on everything, but uh, the Takahe are out. <laughs> that is, all right. I can officially say I've done the Hefe track at this stage. Perry Saddle Hut. 
This was the first hut I stayed at as a guide. I've never seen it this early and this clear. It's so beautiful. I have a punchy uphill left, maybe two kilometers. I've done the upper traverse and almost all of the climbing. I'm having a bit of lunch here. I'm doing a little bit of grilled cheese with English muffins and potato chips. Tonight, I'm not in a dock hut, nor am I in my tent. I'm in a nice little caravan outside of my friend's house. I'm in Golden Bay. Um, it was awesome to catch up with a friend, have some dinner. She made me some delicious fish tacos with some fresh caught snapper. It was excellent. Uh, we had some soda water and some tea. Sat by the fire, got caught up. Very relaxing end to a long and hard day on the Hefe track. For now, I'm gonna get some shut eye. I am exhausted. I just pulled up to the final hurdle of the Kaharangi 500, and that is the Ramika track. It's a historic sheep herding route that was turned into a mountain biking track. It's pretty technical, it gets a little punchy and rooty. I am very tired, so I will be certainly walking big sections of this. gets real rough just walk it this is a hiking trip now I'm a hiker all right ladies and gentlemen the verdict is in. I am virtually at the top of the Takaka Hill. I am 95% of the way through the Kaharangi 500. Clockwise or counterclockwise? Honestly, do what the website says. I definitely think this was worse going clockwise. All I wanted, the whole point, was so I could ride down from Ghost Lake Hut into the Makanui Valley on the old ghost road and do it the way that that is intended to be done. Not worth it. The old, oh man, I had way more walking and hike a bike than I think I would have if I went the other way. So that's it. Woo! Counterclockwise it is. Let's do the damn thing. We're going downhill to Machueca. back on the Great Taste Trail. The Kaharangi 500 is over. It's about sunset right now. We've got about three hours left to go. Be getting home about 8.30, maybe nine o'clock at night. It's been a fun one, honestly. It's a great way to send away New Zealand. I got a week left from today, but I think that it was an excellent way for me to reflect on my time in here in New Zealand. And uh, really, get some appreciation for all of my experiences and the people I've met in a way that I might have missed had I just got right into packing, thrown all my stuff on a plane and headed home to the States. So, um, 
usually I always cope with any type of sadness or emotion with exercise. So this could not have been more perfect. We just gotta head home. Maybe 50 kilometers left, so. The greatest emotional investment of all is falling in love.